it's brilliant working with you because I love the fact that you send the two hours of chapters. Yeah, I send them. Oh, I send them to you. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, some people do a whole book and then the rights holder has to go through the whole book. Yeah. I send them in two-hour chunks, and then you can find anything that needs changing, and I change yeah. it, and we don't move on till you're happy, and then we yeah. move on and do the next two-hour yeah. chunk. And, and that and seems. I, and I love that. The Second World War had been over for nine years, and the British Empire was dissolving rapidly. Power had gone east and west with communism and the dollar on their way to success, and the British left with an almighty overdraft, a tax system that penalised anyone who made any money, and the flight of the best brains out of the country. But not every family with capital despaired. The Beaumonts, whose ancestry reached back to 1066 on the same piece of land, had weathered the storms. Henry, the oldest son, had been killed on the Normandy beaches, so when Sir Thomas had died... The bachelor Reggie had taken on the baronetcy. The first of the new breed of British businessmen, Reggie had insured the family against death duties to make sure Mary Hall stayed in the family for the next generation. Beau, Lorna, Rowell and Karen, Geoffrey's children, Adam and Tammany Jr., Tug's children by his Malay wife, and Ross, the family rebel. Heather Stretch, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And how are yeah. things in Portugal? Yes. I'm guessing you're in Portugal as we speak. Yeah, yeah, I'm in my office. I'm in my office at home. Whereabouts yeah, no. in Portugal are you? Uh, we live in central Portugal, and mm -hmm. um, it's uh, I like it between kind of like halfway between uh, Lisbon and Porto, but inland. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we're, we're a bit closer to Porto, uh, yeah. but it's very rural, extremely rural. So in out my window now that we've got a little bit of a vineyard going on and there's a vineyard going out the back. Um, lots of dogs, so we get lots of bog, uh, dog barking, so hopefully we won't get interrupted with that. Yeah, uh, make yeah, it very interesting. Peaceful, very, and, very rural place. And why do you live there? Oh, it's a good question. Uh, to, to escape the Madden crowd. <laughs> why not? Why yeah, not? Exactly. Yeah, it just, you know, I, I, I had quite a a bit of an intense career for the last 15 years, I sp well, last 10 years I was in England. Yeah. And I was I was on a uh, on an IT contract and I, for six months and um, I was traveling the UK. In fact, I was working for Network Rail. Right. And so um, I was hopping on and off trains, just left, right and center. And I'd, I'd, go, I'd, I'd go on a Monday and come back on a Friday and I'd go up to York and I'd go to Leeds, I'd, all, all over the place. And it just became bonkers. And I, it, it got to the point where I thought, no, this is not fun anymore. This, yeah. I'm really not enjoying it. And yes. I said to my husband, nothing. And so we bought a caravan and we just headed for Europe. And we ended up... It was, just, it was just one of those crazy things. Just, let's just go out there. I, I, it wasn't, I suppose, that crazy. We, we were thinking of emigrating to, to, to France. I mean, that was... The, the whole idea was to go and actually live in France. Mm -hmm. But it turned out to be be way better. So we just looked on the internet for the cheapest European, Western European country, and Portugal came up tops. Yeah. And so well, it's going to have the weather. We yeah. Yeah. Well, the winters are extremely wet. I mean, massively wet. So yeah, and so we're only just coming out of it now. So we've started to get a bit warm now. I mean, a lot better than England. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Anything's got to be better than England than the wet weather. But, uh, well, then my son disagrees with that, but hey ho. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why well, we're here. So that's why you're there. And just to recap, because the book, yeah. Each to His Own, is the second book in the Asian Sagas series. Yeah. And Peter Rimmer, who is the author, was your dad. Yeah. He's not with us anymore. But just, no. just as a recap, tell us about your dad. Um, dad. Um, he died when he was 81. He left uh, the UK on his, pretty much on his 21st birthday. Um, so going back to 1957, I think it was, with his brother. Um, and um, he went to go and live in what was then called Rhodesia. Mm -hmm. Because his mother's first cousin, um, who had been um, in the Malaya part of the, the World War II, had heard about this country called Rhodesia, had been to this place called Rhodesia and said, 
you boys, there's no future in England after the war. You must, you know, go and, you know, find a new life kind of thing. Um, and so that's what the boys did. And they went out to Rhodesia and um, made their life. And dad made his life actually more so in, in South Africa. And right. he lived there for 60 years and, and just just absolutely adored Africa in, in, in its entirety. Um, probably more from the countryside and the bush and, and the animals. And obviously that comes out in his books. So, yeah. um, um, But he was a very highly successful businessman. So he wrote in between um, his business. Um, and, but, but writing had always been his passion. Right. So when he eventually was at, well, he had retired at the age of 37, but he actually from business, but he did other bits and pieces, but he, he carried on writing and ah, just pushed up, you know, letter after letters to agents and publishers and just failed. And yeah. Well, I, I, I watched know. an interview with, um, it was actually John Cleese, who you and I were talking about a, a minute yeah. ago. I watched one of those, a quick interview with him this week, and he was saying that A Fish Called Wanda yeah. was rejected by 10 different studios before wow. they eventually got accepted. It's John Cleese, right? Unbelievable. So, so getting rejected is just ah. the way that the game works. It's just all, it's part of the price of admission, it seems. Absolutely. No matter what level you're at, yeah. it's just how yeah. it works. It's yeah. just, you know, the luck of the draw, I think, at the, at the end of the day as well. And But my dad always maintained, because of the time um, that he lived in Africa, um, the po his politics were just not appropriate and or his way of thinking about Africa or describing Africa. It just wasn't it, it wasn't digestible in the UK. And so that's what he thinks why he got rejected time and time again. It was because of his politics. Um, and what what exactly though? What what specifically like the way he described things that, that I, I wasn't palatable for the UK? I suppose it's it's coming from a black and a white perspective. He was telling right. it from a white perspective. Yeah. Although he Anything that you do read about him, his work, I mean, uh, it's, it's so it's very objective, you know. Yeah. So he's never saying, "Well, the black people were wrong," or, "Well, he, he probably will say the white people were wrong as well." He always does say the Brits, it was a mistake. End off going into Africa. <laughs> it, it was, yeah. I, I suppose, that at the time, that's what he was saying. It was wrong of Britain to be in Africa. Oh, and there was a backlash against that way of thinking because be they were still trying to keep tr still kind of trying to keep the empire together, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, because, people are vulnerable. Yeah, I mean, I, I think his very first book is called All Our Yesterdays, and which was written in 1962, and that book was written into the future, and it pretty much described what was going to happen to Rhodesia. So, yeah, he was foretelling. He could see what was going to happen. Yeah. So yeah, I would I would imagine that's probably. I think he's right. I think yeah, his his politics were not the right time. Okay. Well, he says it how it is. You know. Yes. Yeah. Well, things have changed now. The world is different, and you don't need a big time publisher. You know, there's so many independently right. published work in all fields, in writing and TV and films and everything now. And music. The, the barrier to and music, the barrier to yeah. entry is now much, much lower. And yeah. uh, so it's, it's a hell of a time to be alive, which is what has led you, I'm guessing, to be the custodian of your dad's yeah. legacy. How does it actually yeah. work then? Well, so, I mean, at the time when I visited my dad in South Africa in 2014 uh, my husband and I took the decision when I was going through my crisis with with work yes. um, I, I said you know what dad I think actually I can do this on because um, I, I, I had started using a Kindle in 2009 for instance and we had started to, to dabble with with Google Books right my dad and I and I said you know what I think we can start to do this properly Let, let's let's give this bash. And, and, and that's how it kind of just started. And, and, and because of my IT background, yeah. uh, you know, I had really good skills that I could utilize um, and, and put into action. And, and it just it just the whole digitalization of the ebook industry, even yeah. the print industry, has been revolutionary. 
Yeah. And, you know, I'm not, we, we're not the only one. I mean, the, the whole industry has grown exponentially. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I belong to many Facebook groups and the one group I belong to, I think there's something, I'm going to say 75,000 authors in that group. Yeah. Who are self-publishing. Yeah. And there's a big chunk of them. Yeah. that are earning a good wage. And there's, um, I don't know, I don't know what the percentage is. If my son was here, he'd tell me. But there's a good percentage who are earning seven figures. Yeah, okay. yeah. I can I can believe that because yeah. the overheads of an independent publisher are much lower than a publishing Absolutely. house. Yeah. So they yeah. can, you know, and, and, you know, all I'm learning about at the moment for the past three years is the audiobook world. And yeah. I've I've looked at you know big publishing houses websites to, to to try and see what they do to try and see what best practices and whatever, and they yeah. have prices for producing an audio book, yeah. and they're ridiculous. I looked at yeah. one; it was a special offer, I think, and it was like I think it was like eight thousand dollars or something to produce an audio book. Well, you know, I charge nowhere near that, but Absolutely. but but what I charge, I think, is a fair rate, and I do. I do really well at it because I work yeah. on so many books and I do well. Yeah. So it's it's only because the big publishing houses have got all those overheads and they have yeah. to they've got so many people on their books that they have to on yeah. the payroll and all, all the rest of it. I can see how for the indies it's a, yeah. it's a golden age really, I think. Yeah. And and the royalties that an indie earns compared to a traditionally published author is yeah. is, is light and day. Is it? Oh, because because with an audio book I know it's forty percent. Well, it is through through Audible. Through, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is that you that you'd get through a, um, a a publishing house. I don't know. I don't know what it is through a publishing house, but I'm sure it's no um, secret in the in the self publishing world. But Amazon give you seventy percent royalty. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's from yeah. Wow. From a from a um, a Kindle book uh, yeah. or an ebook. Yeah. 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 Well, that's not, yeah, there's no way that a publishing house is paying that. No. Absolutely not. Look, yes. sure. I mean, a publishing house, like the big five, you yeah. know, if, if, you manage, if you belong to one of those big five publishers and you are big, obviously you're yeah. going to make a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. Because but we're talking got, J.K. Yeah. Rowling here and R.R. R. Martin yeah. and people like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Stephen King. But if yeah. you are not that, you know, high up in the, in the pecking order with a traditional publishing house you're not going to be earning that much money if they'll take you at all absolutely and then plus if they do take you, you're expected also to do your own marketing so really i thought that was the whole point of going with a big publishing house is they yeah, take well, care I, of I, all I believe, that i have been told that that a large part of it is you've got to do your marketing as well you've got to play your part oh well you've got to so, do that anyway so that what's yeah. the advantage just a lower exactly. cut <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So, so yeah, I know it, it. You know, for for my for myself and my son, you know, we both earn a living between yeah. us. Yeah. Great. Publishing Great. my father's novels. You know. What so. a lovely way to do it, though, because you're yeah. of all the people that you'd want to be the custodians of his work, you yeah. would want it to be somebody who really cares, and you never Absolutely. really know when you hand it over to somebody else, but yeah. you know that you care. Oh, Absolutely. that's really great. That really yeah. is good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 an amazing, it's an amazing thing. You know, my, my son, he was um, a chef for all the first ten years of his career, and then he joined me in this, and he just says, "My God, if I had to go back to chefing, it would just be the worst thing on earth." Yeah. Because he loves his job. You know, he yeah. absolutely loves it. He's the advertiser, so he's the one who spends all the money. Yeah. Um, okay. So, okay. Because that is the chunk of our. Uh, you know our earnings it, it goes straight back into advertising but you know yeah. he just I, I can relate work. I can relate since I discovered doing audiobooks you know because I work from home I work for my little booth here I work the hours yeah. I want I work on as many books as I want I choose the books that I work on uh, it would have to be something very special to tempt me back to my old gig yeah. in radio. In fact, yeah. I have nightmares at night where I'm working in radio again. <laughs> do you do you have nightmares when you're working uh, for Network Rail again? I, it, it, or any any of that IT stuff. I mean, I, I sometimes <laughs> think, I dream about having to learn a new piece of software that I've got to go out and train, you know, and think, oh, God, you know. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but, I think that's a good good sign that you've made the right move. If your nightmares, if what yes. your brain is fears the most is going back to doing the old uh, thing you used to do, it's got to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and to work from home and have your own oh, space and yeah, I just love just it. Great. It's just, it is, it is great. It is great. Yeah. I, I always, yeah. I have to force myself to go out every day at least once, and I walk up to the shop if it's not. If it's not raining, I walk up to the Tesco by the railway station. If it's raining, I only walk a couple of blocks to the co-op. But I always make sure I go out and I always make sure I take a photo and put it on Twitter. And it might be just because I know I've got to take a photo. It means I'll cross the road and go to the duck pond and take a photo of a duck. Like, it's just th that when you're in a normal job, you can't just go, I'm going to take a photograph of a duck today. No. Yeah. Today I took a picture of a glove on the pavement and said someone has lost yeah. <laughs> near Brilliant. Cambridge Road. And, you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. just it's that it's that freedom to just do that that the working yeah. from home thing and this yeah. what what we've suddenly got. And of course the pandemic ramped all that up and so many people, you know, thousands and thousands of people have cottoned onto this too now because of the pandemic Absolutely. and they're having a. a they're having a job now filling staff positions in jobs because yeah. people have yeah. worked out a different way of doing things yeah. a much a much yeah. healthier way of doing things totally revolutionized the way the world thinks I, it, it's yeah. completely different yeah and, and even my training colleagues i've got two very good friends who are still in that field and i was having a, a call like this the other day and just listening to them um and saying how they jump on the train and how they've got to learn the bit of software and um you know we're, we're all in that getting onto our 60s you know and it's just like hey no not for me thank you <laughs> i mean i love, i mean look they're earning some damn good money but i, yeah, I still yeah. think uh, god yeah. no yeah. it's not all about money when i think about the the time when i earned the most money which was when i was working for brmb radio in birmingham that was the time i was the most miserable yeah. And when I think about the time when I was the happiest, it was when I was at radio school in Sydney and I earned nothing. Yeah. So money and happiness are not related. Money's important. No. You need it to get yeah. by. And, yeah. you you know, you've got to keep your head above water. You've got to keep the home fires burning and all the rest of it. Yeah. But it's not the be all and end all. It's certainly no, not connected to happiness. It's really not. No, no. No, it really, really. isn't. Yeah. 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 No, it's, 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 it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so this is the second book in the Asian saga series. How do you think this book differs from the first one? Because I felt it had a different vibe. I, do you know what? I think I agree with you. Um, I think it's probably because um, it, it left the old characters behind. Mm -hmm. the, the four brothers. I mean, we know what happened to all the brothers. Yeah, we don't want to give too much away, away, by the way. No spoilers, yeah, but yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we know what we know what happened to them. And I just think when we go into it's a new era. Yes. And so it's it's the next generation. And I think it's more about the fifties and the sixties. Yeah. And I think the world had changed to the era that the four brothers went through. And I think that's what's probably different about it. Um, yeah. Although, of course, there is still there, there's still some of the old characters coming through, you know, mm -hmm. like Ping, Ping, oh God, I can't think of his name now. Ping Lei, you, you must have yes. said it so many times. Yes, but, yeah. You know, um, and I actually, I really enjoyed it. It yeah. was, it was very fast moving. Yes. Um, and, you know, it did chop and change a lot and you had to really be on your toes thinking, right, where we're at now. Oh, we're yeah. in Hong Kong, or we're in China, or we're in the States, or we're, you know. So it was a, it was a bit like that. Um, and, of course, it was a bit hot at times. Yes. Um, and I, I will tell you that there was one chapter that was dedicated to some very serious stuff. And I, when I read through it, I thought, do you know what? This has absolutely no relevance whatsoever. Are you are you are you talking about some shall we say spicy stuff? Yeah, but it was because I I noticed in this one it was less spicy than the first one, and I actually wondered. I thought, was it toned down this one, or did Heather put her foot down and clean this one up slightly? I well, I think it probably was toned down a bit. 
Okay. Um, then it was, as opposed it was to just one, yeah. one particular chapter, and I just thought it truly has no relevance. <laughs> it, it hadn't. It, it, on either side of it, there was just absolutely well several pages of it, a very intense, spicy scene. Uh, okay. Quite a high level, and I yeah. just thought, no, it's, it's just it's just totally irrelevant. Yeah. So, yeah. And I don't think it, by getting rid of it detracted from the story whatsoever. You got the idea of what was going on. And I'm yeah. talking about the China, the, the Hong Kong set. You knew okay. what was going on. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose I did have a little bit of a hand, but but that was the only real part that I thought, no, that, yeah. that, that doesn't belong. Well, I didn't miss it. I don't think uh, the audience misses what they didn't get because they don't no. know. Uh, yeah. it, it moves along at a really nice pace. It just chugs along. Yeah. And... In this one, they go behind the scenes in the showbiz world. Now, you mentioned your dad was a high-flying businessman. And in yeah. the first book, there was a lot more of the business world. There's a lot of business yeah. in this one, too. Yeah. But also the world of show business. Did your dad in real life have a connection to show business? Yeah, he did. Um, and it, oh, it's amazing you pick up on that. Yeah, he did. Um, when he was at school... I, I, from what I can gather little bits, because um, he went to Cranley School in Surrey. And um, he must have, I think it was a boys' school, and I think there must have been a lot of plays th that the lads got involved with, and I think Dad possibly got quite involved with them. But it was when he got to Rhodesia that he joined um, the Rex Theatre, and he played, I've, I've got some of the old um, uh, programmes, um, of, of some of the plays that he went, uh, that he played in. And one of them was called, oh God, it's gone from my brain now, something camera, I am camera. So at the time in the 50s, it was quite a, or even earlier than that, was, yeah, probably about the 50s, it was quite a well-known play. And they did it in Rhodesia and he played, he played a part in that and he did other parts as well. So yeah, definitely had very much an introduction into, into the theatre world and, and, if you were to hear him speaking, he had this massively booming voice. Um, very, and he was a short guy. I mean, he's only five foot eight. And so, right. you know, the, and I suddenly spoke over the phone. People must have thought, oh, my God, this is a huge, big man. But no, no not at all. And he said it was because of his theatre that he, because he was on stage, he had to shout to the back of the auditorium. And so yeah. well, that's that's where he's from. But, yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. so I I wonder if he was if he just taken it to the ultimate because I mean he really does I mean we, we you know we're yeah. talking about Broadway show and uh, yeah. I mean and the yeah. business of it and the behind the scenes and it is quite fascinating as I was yeah. reading it I was thinking has he got some kind of connection just because as far as I knew Heather said he was a businessman but yeah, yeah I I I could yeah. feel that there was the way he'd written it was with a almost a reverence for show business yeah. which which you know some people even in show business can treat it as if w without a reverence if you know what i mean yeah. and it was it was really nicely done really nicely done but with all the, the plot is, twists in there lost too it. really he actually lost that yeah he didn't he didn't wasn't really interested i suppose in his middle age thereafter you know he wasn't really into going to the theater or anything like that yeah so I don't know why. Don't know why yeah. that would have been. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, we deal with uh, a lot of the same characters from the first book, the ones uh, that survived the first book, because some of them didn't. Yeah. How do you think the main characters changed in this book? Because the world is changing and they're getting older and more mature. First book was set you know, mostly during the Second World War. This one, as you said, in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. How do you think the characters changed in this one? That's a good question. Um, I suppose for me, Reggie was my, I don't want to say it, but my disappointment. In this book? Yeah. I wouldn't use the word disappointment, but I know exactly what you mean about Reggie. Reggie was such a, a pivotal character in yeah. the first book. And yeah. in this book, because there's so much more going on, and the younger people in the book are now making their way in the world, and yeah. they're the age that Reggie was in the first book. That's right. Reggie does take a little bit of a back seat, but I suppose um, and that's, that's where my disappointment is. 
Yeah. Really? You would have liked to see more Reggie in there? Yeah, because he was okay. such a, a likable chap, I think. He was. You know? and, He's a charmer. And, yeah. yeah. But he was also he a straight to... businessman as well. He was a respectable yeah. guy. He wasn't a spiv uh, or a wide boy. Yeah. He was. He, he ran a very, very honest yeah. business. Yeah, even yeah, yeah, though yeah. he was he was dealing with some very dishonest people, he was Absolutely. always straight and he kept the whole thing yeah. on the on the level and I like yeah. that about him. I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah. But yeah. I think I think there was enough in it from the younger characters to carry it though. Oh, and yeah. completely. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think Adam was probably the strong character. He was in this book. He was the yeah. Reggie of this book that Reggie yes. was in the previous yes. book as far as as far as holding it together and holding your attention, yeah. Not a duplicate. He was Not at all. Same, you know, just a different different kind of person but but very strong-minded and knew what he wanted out of life. And I yeah. suppose also accepted his circumstances of birth. I yes. Think. Yes. I think he, at the end he accepted that what he got from life he was going to be happy with. I, I think that's why I kind of read into that. Yeah. It's it's a lovely story. It is it's almost totally different to the first book, yet it's got a lot of the the nuances and the there are certain things about the the first book has got a certain vibe and this one's got a different vibe because it's in a different yeah. time. But yeah. it is it does bring the story on. They'd make lovely movies they would you yeah. know or, or maybe yeah. more miniseries to get to get all the detail in a movie's probably yeah. not long enough to get to, yeah. to cover the characters properly and to build them properly have you have you plans to take it to another medium you've got an audio book which is a start not with the asian sagas right okay our yeah. target is the brigginshaw chronicles which currently we've, we've um published 15 books in the series wow yeah. Yeah. And we've got another two to go. So yes. um those that that we at one hundred percent seeing as being we'd love that to be a TV miniseries. I mean, it yes. would just be absolutely incredible. And it's not dissimilar to the Asian sagas. Yeah. Um it, it's very family drama. And so um yeah, we, we've got some we've got some ideas how we would like to try and do that. Um mm -hmm. We've never heard anybody doing it um, from the forums that we belong to, but um, it's a possibility we might try and dig into that next year. Mm -hmm. And that's to go to pitch fest, pitch festivals, yes. and see you know if we can sell it to yes. somebody. You know the yeah. idea, but whether that would work or not, I don't know. I mean, you know, every author wants to have their book. Yes. Yes. You know, and so it, it, it's it's possibly a pipe dream, but it's certainly something that I, I want to give my best shot. Well, you, you can't w you can't win the raffle unless you buy a ticket. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and Absolutely. I used to uh, in radio. I always used to play long shots. If I wanted somebody to interview, I would try and track them down because the worst thing that happens is they can, that can happen is they say no. And the great thing about playing long shots like that, even though you're, the stake you put in is very low, it's a yeah. it's 20 minute research and a 10 minute phone call. Um, the stake is very low, but if they but if but when long shots pay off, they pay off big. So yeah. why not play the odd long shot now and again? The real but because the stake you lose is not that much. I mean, it no. maybe is a bit more for you because you've got to go to these pitch festivals which i'm guessing are all over the world probably mostly in the us and the uk i'm guessing london and um, london and california yeah yes yeah yeah so yeah so there's a bit more at stake but hey like i say yeah yeah no can't win the raffle if you don't buy the ticket no yeah no but it's interesting that you say that the asian sagas could possibly would make something interesting out of it you know and and yeah i mean there's some very flawed characters. Um, but that's what makes them great. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, you know, there's a couple, obviously, in this one, ladies. Yes, yes. And, uh, well, actually, one of the chaps is as well, but I think particularly the ladies, you know, the, the one lady is youngster. She's yes. exceptionally flawed, but yes. quite interesting, I think, you know. Yes, just the and, right uh, side of shallow, but still yes. interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And you yes. know, it makes me makes me wonder whether 
these types of people that my, my dad describes and writes into characters, are these people he actually met? They I mean, must. There must be something there. There might be an amalgamation, but there must be. Yeah. It must be based on something. Must be. Gotta be. He must have met people like that, and it's just like whoa, you know. Um, well, the life he led, though, to be like an international businessman, you know, yeah. and and there is something about as well the the immigrant work ethic which yeah. he would have had being outside yeah. the UK. Yeah, it will force him into meeting with people he wouldn't normally maybe bother with if he'd stayed back yeah. in Britain. And, yeah. you know, interesting, you know, windswept and interesting people from all yeah. over the world, which yeah. is in the first book and in this book is what he is. The characters are interacting with people from all corners of the world. Yeah. Uh, it's called Asian sagas, but this one, a lot of it takes place in the US and uh, as well as uh, as in Asia, Southeast Asia, yeah. a lot of it. But Africa in the first book, too. And so yeah. that they they were the places as where the books are set mirror his life. Yeah. So the characters must mirror characters must he met in his life. So they must do. Yeah. 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 And it's like getting an insight into somebody's life and the challenges that or the challenging people they came yeah. up against and how he yeah. you know, he would have dealt with it and people around him. Would yeah. have dealt with it, or maybe yeah. even how he'd wished he dealt with certain situations. It could be, you know. All I know is that he loved his life. He just, yeah. I know it was a well loved life and yeah. a well lived life. Um, yeah. I, I think he trod on some a lot of toes. Yeah. You know, he, 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 I think I probably said in the last interview that he he wasn't a he wasn't an easy man. Right. He was right. quite quite a uh, he was a difficult character. But yeah. his books belie that. You know, he, he comes across in his books as being pretty emotional, very family orientated. Um, yeah. But that wasn't perceived from my perspective. Um, I, I think, you know, as a daughter father relationship, it was, I'm not saying it was strained at all because it wasn't. It was just, it just wasn't a close relationship. Right. Um, uh, on an emotional level if that makes sense. But back then, sense. men were not as emotional or as no. emotionally available as they are now. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I, I suppose towards the end of his life, I'd say the last 10 years, we became on an emotional level far closer. But before that, I think I was just probably quite immature in my in my thinking and the way my life had, had progressed. But as I got older, obviously you start to change. So I think yeah. he started to appreciate that. Um, yeah. But I, I, I would say a lot of people who knew him, they would say, yeah, he was he was quite a difficult man. And, I, and definitely in business, I think he trod on toes. Yeah. Um, and, but in a good way, you know, he made business happen. Yeah. So, and, and, again, and I think, again, that, that, for me, that really comes out in Bend of the Wind. Yes, um, the first book, yes. Yeah. And in another book, which is Vultures in the Wind, which is the book set in South Africa, which really goes into his business life, that right. you can you can see a hell of a lot of him. Right. Um, but yeah, he was he was he was interesting. To be a he successful was, business person, though, you've got to be you you've got to be not too agreeable. If you're yeah. agreeable, then you're going to get taken advantage of by other people because you're going to help them succeed in their goals you've got to find yeah. a way where you can help them succeed in their goals while you are achieving yours yeah, to be yeah. extremely successful in business yeah. because that's the the best it's win-win it's like dr stephen covey's seven habits of highly effective people talks about yeah. you should go for always go for win-win rather than yeah. win-lose or lose win that's because right. that's the, the the best way to go so he's yeah. he, and to go for for that you can't be too agreeable or you'll go for lose win every time you'll yeah. lose yeah, so he would so. have had to have been that to be such a successful yeah. businessman so yeah, that yeah, would yeah. have been part of his character i'm guessing yeah, yeah. no I, I i would agree with that yeah mm. and i i found but, that i found a lot of that seemed that see i in the first book, I I th I think there was a lot of Reggie from him. I feel that. Yeah. Second book, I don't know. I didn't feel that he was Adam. You know what I mean? I no, I Definitely think he was not. more in the second book. I I feel he was more an observer and a commentator on what Adam was going through in the second yeah. book. 
Yeah. It, it felt that way, the, the way it was yeah. written. I could yeah. be completely wrong, I'm just telling you what. Uh, you'll never know, of course, either. You yes. Know, we can you know, yeah. assess and, and analyse it. But I, I think, um, you know, Adam was far more amenable. Mm. He was, a, a, I, think a ni- I think, probably a nicer person at the end of the day mm. than what... But, uh, but Reggie was very likeable too, so, you know... Yeah. yeah, Reggie was uh, charming. Yeah. Yeah, very charming. Yeah. 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 But he would Paul get his own way. Pardon? He would get uh, Reggie would get his own way. Like as is that yeah. agreeable thing he wouldn't be taken yeah. advantage of. But he would yeah. stay charming throughout. Yeah. So that uh, yeah. he would yeah. Um yeah. Oh, they they they're great books. And how did you find yeah. the process of turning this one, the second one each to his own? How did you find the process of turning this one into an audiobook? I think I'm, I'm becoming an old hat, so it was <laughs> it was far far easier than, than when I did Band of the Wind, which I think was the third book I did. So okay. you know, we've done I think it's nearly twenty five in total now. So um, as audio books. Oh, sorry, as audio books. So, sorry, I'm talking about yeah. the whole thing. No, okay. no, no. So yeah, no. Oh, it's it's brilliant working with you because I love the fact that you send the two hours of chapters. Yeah, I send them. Oh, I send them yeah, to sorry. you. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, some people do a whole book and then the rights holder has to go through the whole. Book. Yeah. I send them in two-hour chunks, and then you can find anything that needs changing, and I change yeah. it, and we don't move on till you're happy, and then we move yeah. on and do the next two-hour yeah. chunk. And, uh, and that I, seems. And I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I'm working with another um, narrator who's doing the Brigginshaw Chronicles, and he does the whole thing in one go. Right. Okay. Well, if that's the way he, he likes does, to work, sometimes he does a bit, um, but it's 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 really daunting. So that's why I love when you and I work together that we do these two hours and it's uploaded yeah. immediately. It's there. It's done. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a far easier process, I would say. Yeah. Um, and when we get to the end, I've just got the last two hours to fix up, and we know when that's all fixed up that yeah. it's done. Uh, oh, we it's we sign it off. Yeah. <laughs> And, and again, like like I did with Bend of the Wind, there were many moments when I chuckled because <laughs> you have your accents down to a T and I just, I don't know how you do it. Oh, I just I, love doing all the characters. What I do is I have a, when a new character appears, I uh, copy that line of audio from the first line or maybe the second line if the first line is very short, maybe the second line is a bit longer. And I put it in a, a voice bank for that book so okay. that when that character comes up again, because often in books, characters can disappear for a few chapters and then they come yeah. back and I have to go, geez, how did I have them going? And yeah. I go back and I listen and there it is. It's me doing that character. Yeah. And so yeah. I have a, a voice bank of, uh, of voices. Actually, let me have a look at the voice bank for... Actually, this is a voice bank for the first two. Yeah, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, oh 52. I'm only at the Ds, and I'm already at 51 characters. So there's probably... Yeah, it's probably well over 100 characters in, in the two books because yeah. it's everybody because um, I learned that on the, I think it was about the fourth or fifth audio book I'd ever done. Right. And it was a time travel book. And because they were jumping backwards and forwards in time, yeah. even someone who served them in a coffee shop, I would have to put like barista at the coffee shop I'd have to call them and get their name because they might go back in time and go in that coffee shop the day before they went in in the first bit because it's time travel and it was really oh hard God. it was really hard to keep up with all the yeah. characters so that's the way I do it all now um right. yeah all of the books now so um yeah so and there's well over 100 characters in the two books of different I, th- I think you said to me with Ben there was 139 you said something like in that in the first book yeah I'm sure well, you well, there maybe, the, maybe there could be 200 in this one then. I don't it, know. It could be. All together, yeah. Yeah, but, I don't know um, how to make it count them. Mm. How do you, like, you come across an accent, like a Chinese yes. accent? Do you go and research yes. it? Yeah, I'll go on YouTube usually and I'll put uh, Chinese accent or Bangkok accent or wherever it is. I'll try and get it as close because the thing is I might have another Chinese, uh, someone from, who's Chinese, but they're from a different part of China. They might be... Uh, 
you know, and so I will try and get it as specific as I can, and I'll watch a few videos from different people. Some of them are actually people from that part of the world telling you how they speak there. Others are from actors who do accents, give wow. telling you how to do this particular accent, and I do my best with them, and uh, give it my little spin because they still have to. You still have to read the text yeah. and see what kind of person they are, because it's no yeah. good doing someone who's Chinese and they're very, very light when they're a really heavy gangster or something. You yeah. have, they still have to sound like a gangster. So yeah. I have to take that and blend it with whatever's in the text, because the 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 manuscript gives you the character. You've yeah. just got to kind of layer the accent on the top of that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and so I'll do that. So it's quite a talent that you've got then to be able to. Because I, I, I can listen, I, I can't put it into action. No way. <laughs> you know, I, well, I thank, can't even thanks for that. I just. <laughs> thanks for I just. I, it, well, I just work at it and get it to how I want it, and then hope that the the rights holder or the author likes it. But I've I've had times where they've made me change the entire character. I did a children's book. I work with a lovely guy. He lives in Lincoln. And I do some kids' books for him. And we did one called Trevor the Tractor. And it's about a tractor who loved being a tractor in the showroom. But then when he gets onto a farm, he can't stand the dirt and the mud, can't stand it. So when I did it, I read the book. And to me, it, it sounded like, you know, he was very poncy. So I did him as, ooh, dirt, you know, kind of thing. And then he listened back and he went, no, that's not him at all. He's, he's a bit more angry than that. Okay. And then I had to think and I thought, well, how do I make him not liking dirt and stuff? And then I, I don't know if you remember, the. I, I'm too young to remember this, but the old Tony Hancock, Hancock's Half Hour radio show, and he did, there's a sketch called The Blood Donor. Uh, Dougal from The Magic Roundabout is based on that character as well. I don't know if that helps. Anyway, so I did like a cross between those two. He loved it. So sometimes I get it wrong and I have to fix it. But that's just yeah. the way it goes, isn't it? I, I take yeah. my best shot at it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and if it isn't quite right, it can always be changed. It's, it's no good deal to change it. How many yeah. how many audio books have you actually done now? 173. Wow. In three years, yeah. 173. What period? So three yeah, years. Three wow. years. It started. I got uh, I got fired from my radio job in February 2020. In March Gosh. 2020, we went into lockdown, and I couldn't get a radio station to give me an interview. And I suddenly had to work out. We just wow. got a. We were two years into a mortgage because working in radio I moved around a lot I mean I started yeah. in Australia and then it was all over the UK I mean literally all over the UK from the south yeah. coast to the northeast to uh, West Midlands East Midlands uh, all over London everywhere and each time I got a new radio job I had to move house so we were renting but then we live in Hitchin now in Hertfordshire just north of London I had a job in Hertfordshire and then the next job I got was in London so I just commuted on the train to London and so we decided well it looks like you know this is southeast UK is where we we've kind of settled we'll, yeah. we'll buy now we were two years into the mortgage and I get fired from this radio job and then suddenly had to work out how to earn a living from home and so uh, I did I went online and I found ACX and you can audition for audiobooks and and I just started first three auditions I did I got a book and I went, wow and then I did another three auditions I got another book and I'm like well wow. I thought this is pretty good. I was thinking you'd have to do like a hundred auditions to get a book I was yeah. really prepared for that too yeah. and so I did the first 50 audiobooks from inside my wardrobe and oh, then God. Yeah, and then, um, which is just there, and then I, because I was doing so well, I upgraded my microphone, I bought this, this is a purpose-built sound booth, it's a mob in Yorkshire came down and built it, it cost £6,000, but it wow. really made a difference because it really started to sound professional then, yeah. and just along the way I upgraded my computer, upgraded my mixer, so I've got all the best kit yeah. and I work as hard as I can and I absolutely love it and this year I got nominated for two awards I was nominated at the New York Radio Awards in the audiobook category for best narration and I'm nominated I didn't and that was those awards were a couple of weeks ago but I didn't I didn't win I was just nominated I'm oh, yes. also nominated at the One Voice Awards and the ceremony is on the 13th of May. It's a Saturday night in London at a big hotel 
and we're going. We've booked. We've even booked a room in the hotel. Absolutely and I'm down brilliant. to the. I'm down to the final seven, uh, oh, in the UK for their audio. But they only have two audio book categories. Uh, one of them is fiction. One is factual. And funny enough, it's a factual one. Although okay. I ended up doing characters in it because it's about. Um, it's the story of a drug dealer from Liverpool called Curtis Warren, who was a very famous you know, criminal. And so uh, I do the accents of the, the Dutch police as he goes over to Holland and he's on the run and then the Liverpool police. And so I, there is characters in it, even though it's a factual book. But yeah. I'm up for best narration factual and I'm down to the final seven. There's the seven awesome. finalists. And uh, yeah, and, and but it's just from a standing start because I'd never done an audio book before. I didn't know the first thing about, I've had no acting training or anything like that. I've just been on the radio as a as a DJ or as a talk show host in I'm later years. I'm saying that's, that's probably what's done it for you because as I, I think I told you, I, my purpose was going to be doing my dad's books. I was going to narrate them. I bought all the kit. Right. And it just, it just, <laughs> no, I just didn't have the talent for it. I mean... I have the accent for it from an African perspective, but when I tried yes. it, no, never. It wasn't going to work. So, yeah. you know, so no, you know, all credit, you know, you, you've done a flipping amazing. So, oh, it's going, it's going so good. It's going, it's going really, really well. And I, I work, I do a lot of work like your one through ACX. But I also work directly with agencies. There's one in Connecticut called Tanta. I don't know if you've heard of yeah. them. And I get a yeah. lot of work through Tanta Direct. I don't really? even audition for them. They just send them to me. I've done, uh, there's one coming out tomorrow, actually, which is the history of the Beaufort uh, family. And it's like a 18 hour book, that one. And uh, yeah, I've, they've actually asked me to, they've asked me if I'm interested in another one, which is 22 hours long. And I've said, yeah, I had a look at the manuscript said, yeah, put me down for that. So if that comes through, I'll get that. I work with uh, other agencies here and there who now contact me direct. Uh, one of them in Russia, I'm doing a series of six yeah. science fiction books, which have been translated into English by Russian science fiction writers, which is a thing apparently. And wow. uh, so, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I can only do a certain amount of work. I don't do that many auditions. I haven't auditioned for about six weeks because all this, I get a lot of repeat work as well from authors yes. I work with because yes. I like to, you know, it's, I'm not a complete mercenary. I do like to, like, it's great talking to you, you know, because you, right. you say your dad had an interesting life. You've had an interesting life too, you know, and to get to yeah. know the people and, and, and what that, that to get a bit closer to them. Cause I think it all helps when you do the book, you've got a lot yeah. more, in there i think like doing the second book each to his own for me was a lot easier than doing the first book because yeah. i'd met you oh, oh this way we, we haven't met yeah, yeah, yeah. in real life uh, and yeah. i and you tell me about your father and all the rest of it and so i could just get a little bit more under the skin of it and i just i just love it i've met the loveliest people all over the world bloke yeah. in china that that time travel book the bloke was in china that did that one most of them in the u.s but all over the u.s uh, both coasts and in the middle i did i was uh, i did i've done a series so far of two books from a lovely lady in uh chicago and there's stories of black lesbians in chicago and i play all the lesbians <laughs> I mean, talk about, you know it's just so much fun and i do it all from home on my own clock and on my own time and it's just lovely i meet lovely people from all over the world because the one thing that people who are who have put books out they're all passionate about the work it really yes. means something to them yeah. it really does i mean yeah. you it's your father you know what i mean goodness me and, and yeah. others are you know you don't working directly with the authors it's just a wonderful way to earn a living it's just Incredible. wonderful yeah. and does anybody assist you in your work no, it's just me. Um, wow! So my, all the my, editing my, and everything you, you've learned how to do, and that must have, yeah, even yeah. from my own experience of learning the software in order to do that. Yeah, obviously you come from the, the radio background, so you would have had a good idea. Yeah, we used how, to we used to cut audio all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. So I suppose that comes with comes with that. Yeah, yeah. and it's getting it's getting quick as well. Um, yeah, it's because the. You, you know, you pay per finished hour. So if it takes you all day to do a finished hour, your hourly rate's not really that good. Absolutely. But, you know, but I can yeah. knock off, um, easily I can knock off four finished hours in a day on, wow. you know, because I'll do, I'll do 
with I work it on the deadline. So if we're in each to his own, I'll do a chapter. But yours were quite long chapters. Yeah. You know, some yeah. of the chapters may be an hour and a half. Yeah. But I do I'll do a may I'll do a chapter of 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 your one and then I'll do a chapter of a kids book that may only be 5 yeah. minutes and then I'll do a chapter of of a business book and whatever and I've usually got I like to have about 8 books on the go at once but a uh, week before last I did have 11 on the go that was a bit many um and so I'm there's a lot of variety and switching and I like to be able to switch so yeah. that I can be I can be all the characters in Asian Saga and then I can be Trevor the Tractor or a, yeah. you know or, or whatever it is so it keeps it interesting um yeah. as well so i'm always i'm always challenging myself like that Brilliant. and it also means i've got i haven't got those flat spots in between where you've got no work if you just work on one book at a time i i, I don't i don't think business wise that would that would work for me so i yeah. basically I, I start the day with the one with the nearest deadline do a chapter then work out how many days i've got till the deadline and go do i need to do another chapter here to stay on track and if i do i'll do another chapter but if i don't i'll move on to the next one but if i move on down and i've got to number usually number eight if then it's like there's still an hour to go before i have to cook tea before julie comes home because i'll cook her tea because she goes out to work uh i'll if i've got an hour i'll just do an hour of auditions just to finish the day off and then just you know, when they when they pop through, when you get them, then you add them. But usually, uh, the way I've been working last six weeks, I haven't had that hour at the end of the day. I've just been going right to the end. Wow. I've had that much to do. It's been great. It's been really, really Brilliant. good. It's been lovely. Yeah. Can I throw in something very controversial? Why not? What is your take on AI? I have only just discovered this, uh, specifically yeah. chat GTP. Or P uh -huh. Chat G is is that the one you're you've looked at? Chat GPT, okay. yeah. Chat GPT. It's an author in Florida called Danielle Pai, who I've done three science fiction books with and one murder mystery. She's you know, she's doing the sequel to the murder mystery, and I'm going to do that. And she's she said to me, "Hey, look, I've just done this. I've just put in there. Uh, write me a story in this many words." Yeah about because she it was when i just got nominated for this award about graham mack winning uh, an audiobook narration award and it wrote a page of like a story with a beginning a middle and an end and i went holy cow so i signed up to chat chat gtp and funnily enough i like twitter and i put in it today write a tweet about uh, I think I just put something about why audiobook. I think, in fact, I'll find the tweet. I'll forget the question I asked it. I yeah. said, write me a tweet about why you should listen to audiobooks. I'm pretty sure that's the question. And Chat, and chat GTP said, goodbye to eye strain and hello to a world of limitless imagination. Then it had like a few emojis with eyeballs and, and books and then headphones. And then it said, give audiobooks a chance and let the power of storytelling take you on a journey without lifting a finger. And then it hashtagged audiobooks, hashtag storytelling, hashtag imagination and hashtag convenience. And all I added to it was a link to my website. <laughs> but oh my uh, chat, G it wrote that, um, that tweet for me. Because I like to tweet every day to promote, my, to try and get people yeah. to check out my website where I've got all my uh, books listed yeah. with links to Amazon. But a few weeks ago, uh, I work with a guy called John Pierman who writes the Liverpool football, I'm a Liverpool fan, and he writes the Liverpool football club fanzine read all over the land. And from time to time, we do a thing like this, Only we do it live. And we're doing one tomorrow night at 6.30 if you're interested, if you're a Liverpool fan. But anyway, we're doing one tomorrow night. And the one tomorrow night, actually, we recorded the interview, but we're going to do live top and tail. We're going to come in live and say, this okay. is a guy. It's an, it's an ex-Liverpool player called uh, John Newby, who only m made four appearances for the first team. But he's written a book about his life and his amazing life. And he's uh, he's got a defibrillator in his chest because he's got a heart condition. Wow. And it's, it's a great story. And he's worked. And then he worked worked uh, as a footballer on all these different uh, smaller football clubs like Berry all over the country and now he's on the training staff at Liverpool Football Club and he, uh, he he looks after the youth team or he scouts youth players anyway so we did this interview with him and of course I read his book to be able to do the interview I didn't not an audio book I just read his book yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so I was prepped for the interview 
And so a couple of days afterwards, John gets on to me. He says, oh, he says, I'd love to do a book review in the, in the next issue of the fanzine. Can you do me a, a review of John Newby's book? Now, yeah. I'm flat out busy with the audiobooks, And I know that, you know, writing a book review, although yeah. I've read the book, it's going to take me a few hours to do a nice job of it. Yeah. So I went to chat GTP and I put, write me a review of... Uh, Addicted to Football by John Newby. Bang! It yeah. did. Uh, I said, and how many words? I said, in 600 words, because John said he wanted it in 600 words. I said, in 600 words. Bang! Copied it, sent it to John. Yeah, done. Didn't tell him. <laughs> That's how I did it. But it was amazing. I mean, I, I, I did tweak the beginning and the end. Yeah. But the rest of it, I didn't touch it. It's scary. It's scary what it can do. Scary. But I think that my, my question to you is about what, how do you feel about AI taking over doing audiobooks? Well, I think, you know, the books I do that I have the most fun with are the fiction books. Yeah. And the fiction books have all the accents and the characters. Yeah. I think we're a long way off AI being able to do that. But I think yeah. we're already there with AI doing business books. And if okay. I was to lose business books, it wouldn't bother me. I do them. Uh, I, no, I do, I do a lot of them. Um, what I worry about with AI is I've got, like I say, 173 audio books out there. Yeah. If somebody was dishonest, yeah. they could buy 10 or 20 of those with my voice on. Yeah. They could put them into an AI and the yeah. AI would then sound exactly like me. Mm. So you would get me. They obviously wouldn't yeah. call it me. Of course. So that could be done. But I can't see it being able to do it so much with fiction books. Might yeah. be wrong. Because I think even in the narration of the, the narration parts, the non-character parts of fiction yeah. books, I think... I like to put in a human connection. Yeah. Like, so if there's a line, it just doesn't say, well, he was, it doesn't say he was really unhappy about that. Although you'll hear some narrators read it that way. I'll yeah. go like, he was really unhappy about that. But yeah. then he can, you know, I will put some of me yeah. just enough. I don't want to take over, but I will always put a little bit of that, even in the, I'll make it as human as possible, but yeah. still have the authority of the being slightly a step back from the story because I didn't write it. But I, I will put some humanness into it. And then as well as the characters with all the accents, yeah. I don't know if an AI could necessarily, I don't think it's there with that yet. Might get there one day. I don't know. Well, in the author world, everybody's very much very jittery because people are very worried that chat GPT is going to be able to write novels right that's so you you can put in um i suppose um an outline and you can say yeah. right write me a book around that outline it's not there yet but that's where people are, are starting to get a bit jittery but if it does that yeah i think the biggest dilemma then is going to be in the ownership of course because if somebody is signed up to chat, chat gtp yeah. i mean i did a book I shouldn't say this, so I'm not going to say too much. But I did a book the other day, a very short business book. I think the book was only half an hour long when it was finished. And I thought to myself, ChatGTP could have written that. I wonder yeah. if that's what's happened here. Because it didn't have any humanness in it. It was yeah. just about procedure. Yeah. And I don't know, and... And it would obviously be insulting the author if I was to challenge them and I would never even ask them. Yeah. But I don't see any reason why it couldn't have written it if he'd yeah. have put in the right things. But if somebody does that and then copies it, who owns the work? Because yeah. if the author can own the work by asking the question, yeah. then the authors should be singing and dancing in the streets because now they can write hundreds more books every year because it's so fast That's if they've already got the channels 
if they've got the channels and the marketing expertise and the systems for getting them out there and making them sell, this is the thing that's going to, particularly with instructional business books, how-to books, uh, maybe even travel guides and tips for using the London Underground without getting pickpocketed or whatever it turns out to be. I'm pretty sure now Chat GTP could write them, but yeah. how the owners of Jack, Chat GTP could trace that and go, no, we wrote that, we own it, you don't. You wouldn't have to change it that much, but it'd be certainly quicker than writing it if that's yeah. what you wrote. In yeah. which case, it would be a bonus for authors because they can yeah. just get more work done. Yeah. Uh, an actual novel, though, on the scale of of each to his own or the uh, the the first Asian sagas book. I can't, I don't think, I don't know, I don't think writing-wise it's there yet, but I think it'll get there quicker than it will with narrating, but I think narrating, I think I think I might have long enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, 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 what are your thoughts it? on it? Yeah, what are your yeah, thoughts I, on I, it? I think it's just something that, that's recently reared its head and it's just something that we're considering and yeah. thinking, well, do we bury our head in the sand or... Do we embrace this yeah. and see what we can get out of it? Yes. And I, I think that's where we as a business are looking. We're, we're trying to see, we're all right, let's let's not bury our head because this is here, it's here to stay. There's well, no for instance, out. for instance, like John, who's my friend, and the fanzine is really not for profit. He sells it for two pound a copy, but it's for the football fans at the match to read at the match instead of the program because it's more honest. It's written by the fans. When John asked me to write that book review and I did it that way, yeah. if the Liverpool Echo newspaper had asked me to write a book review of that book, yeah. I would have charged them some money. Yeah. And the book was written in probably 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it would have been a bonus. Yeah. How honest that would have been, I don't know. But the thing is, I did read the book. So yeah. when I read the thing, I went, yeah, 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 that's, wow, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 fine. Yeah. It's not like I didn't read the book. But the thing is, you could have not read the book and written a book yeah. review. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But there is, there is also underlying it, though, which is a, a huge question, is the legalities. Because... Yes, the, the copyright ownership of the work. Yeah. Who owns yeah. that? Because they, it, because the software is scraping the data, yes, from the internet, and it, that's yes. where it's getting its getting its however it works. So in my so, case, it could have been an amalgamation of of reviews that, that all right so maybe it is a bit cheeky well maybe it's, it is a good job I only did it with a fanzine and not yeah. an actual yeah. publication. Yeah. I'm not even sure if I would have been bold enough if it was if I was being paid. Uh, I don't even think I. I could have been, yeah. but it was John, and it was a fan. It's yeah. a fanzine article, Easy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and I wasn't paid, so I'm not that bothered. It was yeah. just a time saver. Yeah. But yeah, we're we're in interesting times. But I don't we know. Are. I don't know as far as like AI with voice is concerned. I don't. I don't. I mean, could really anybody read those Harry Potter books like Stephen Fry? Could a could a AI do that? I can't oh, well. see it. I, I know, I, but that, th this is the thing. I mean, you know, when we think back to the year 2000, you know, when the internet was in its infancy, oh, I got, no, this is impossible. You know, yeah. we, we were all thinking the same thing. We, the, the, it was inconceivable. Yeah, you but know what? Yeah, what, like in the in 2000, if someone had told you you you'll have a you'll have a box in your kitchen and you go, hey Alexa, what's the weather going to do today? And it talks back to you. And the and freaky one with Alexa is, if I get up early before Julie gets up and I whisper to her and I go, Alexa, put milk on the shopping list, she whispers back. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I've just put milk on your shopping list, she says. <laughs> Didn't know it does that. That's does brilliant. that. Try it. If it's, if, oh, when, it, when I first did it, it freaked me out. <laughs> yeah. She whispers, oh, if you fantastic. whisper to her, she'll whisper back. Well, uh, well, we've got Hey Google upstairs. Okay, yeah. And Same thing. And we've got Alexa yeah. downstairs, so. Yeah, yeah. She's just answering me. He's just answering me. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. a lot of fun. 
lot of fun. Okay, the oh. book is, we've talked about a lot today, oh, but the thing so you good. need to know is that Each to His Own is book two in the Asian Sagas series. Now, you don't have to have read book one to enjoy this one. It is a continuation, but they're completely different stories with beginnings, yeah. middles, and ends. So if you if you like to get into these books, try this one out. This one is set in the 50s and 60s. The earlier one is set during the Second World War, around the 40s. So check them out. They're by Peter Rimmer, and they are terrific. You get them on Amazon. You get them everywhere. You get them on Audible, and you get them through Apple, whatever there is. It's still called iTunes. I don't know whatever it's called. I'll put a link, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link to the Amazon version of it where you can get it. Download it. Check it out. If you subscribe to Audible, it won't cost you anything. It's part of your subscription if you just take this one for the month. Check it out. Heather Stretch, lovely to talk to you. Oh, brilliant. It's been amazing. Thank you. Great fun.